today we're going to have a cross the pond discussion between Yankee stacking and backyard bullion. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Today I have the distinct honor and privilege of having the Backyard Bullion with me on this video. I am really looking forward to it. We're going to have some awesome uh, discussion. We're going to talk about silver and gold and what's going on in the economy. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you uh, enjoy it. And right now I am going to bring in the one and only Backyard Bullion. How do yanking? Yankee, how are you? Hey, Backyard Bullion, how are you, man? I'm, yeah, well, in this crazy world we live in, we're doing all right. I hope you guys are all right on that side of the pond. Oh, we're hanging in there, man. <laughs> I oh, want to say it's this is pretty a mad moment. This, this is a transcontinental uh, collaboration going on right here. So I apologize if there's any, any little glitches or, or, or sound. We're going to be uh, being careful with our video and audio here on this call, but uh, hopefully it'll go well. I think it's a sign of the world being a little bit strange at the moment because I've experienced like reductions in internet speeds going from all over the place. Yeah. It seems like the world is going a little bit mad at the moment. But yeah, it's uh, very true. Yeah, very true. it's so. I uh, I really like this idea of a transatlantic discussion pod podcast. I think that's what we uh, agree to kind of call it because there's not really one topic really that we're focused on. We're going to talk about quite a lot today, I think, aren't we? Um, yes. But uh -huh. I thought it would be interesting to see because I've always been fascinated with american culture and especially when it comes to stacking and prepping and i was right. never i'd never consider myself a stacker or a prepper but with the world going the way it's gone in the last year and more right you know it just it starts ringing a lot more true and you see what's happening in the world and you kind of think goodness me i have so, a, um, I have a, yeah, I have a split I feeling interesting to have a i have a i have a, a feeling around that too it's it's a little um I don't want to be right. <laughs> I don't want to, no. you know, have my prepping uh, concerns realized. But, you know, I'll tell you, I feel I'll just a little vindicated. Um, you know, I've been prepping N95 masks, uh, you know, four and a half years ago. I haven't bought a single one now because of uh, the need uh, for it in our medical community. But, you know, I do, I do feel like it's been important to do, and I'm kind of glad I did it. I mean, we, as I said, we're not, preppers we're not mm. i mean stacking is also like an interesting way I, I see myself as like having my wealth rather than stacking for any kind of collapse or anything like that but uh, it does make me glad to have all of these when you think about how much money was just eradicated mm. from stocks and shares and markets and well, everything going on in this world so um yeah. if i'm not buying tin food i'm very glad that i'm still diversified in this stuff so uh it, it's an interesting time it is it is and i i think you know the other thing that i'm really looking forward to is really getting that international uh perspective i have to admit i'm probably a terrible american when it comes to being you know u.s centric in my videos i sometimes feel like i need to apologize to my international subscribers and viewers because i talk a lot about ah. the u.s but you this is this is going to make it very enjoyable for me to hear what it's like uh in, in great britain right you're you're right there in in uh, england yeah so. yeah i mean i think we both know that we can't talk too much about the specific reason why everything is crazy right now because of <laughs> wonderful youtube policies so <sighs> we'll avoid using the the exact term for what's going on but yeah. um yeah it's and we don't want to i suppose this could be podcast number two what you know what we're all living with in the mm. real world these times we want to keep it on the metals i suppose but there's crazy crazy things happening and uh you know stuff that i think a lot of people never thought they'd see in their right. lifetimes um including kind of silver so you know if we bring it round into the metal world right yankee uh you know i'd, I'd sent you a couple of pointers mm. for some discussion topics and i think the one that everybody's going to be talking about is this stuff here you can't see my, my <laughs> videos off i'll turn my video yeah let's see it here oh look at them tap away there <laughs> that's gorgeous <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. All of silver. that stuff, where everybody's focus is right now, and right. I feel like that's a bit of. And certainly for us in the UK, it's always been a difficult one because silver has so much of a premium because of taxes, mm -hmm. taxation mm -hmm. in the EU, which affects us in the UK, mm -hmm. and it's just always been a bit of a bugbear for a lot of people that you buy this stuff at an overspot, and then you sell it for spot when you mm. need to. So how, how's 
the the difference for us, I suppose, is silver is still very attractive because everybody thinks it's going to shoot the moon or do something crazy. But the reality is, the premiums are just ridiculously high. Right. But for you guys, that's never really been a big factor. If you could maybe tell some of our UK viewers how you, you feel you've noticed the world of silver changing for you, be quite interesting to start us off. Well, yeah, I think it is. Um rather unique hearing about or seeing firsthand what uh, silver premiums have gone through. It's been a struggle um, for people who are at least buying silver. Uh, those that actually hold it, uh, I, I think it's important to talk about the positives here. One of the reasons why uh, silver prices went down, and actually gold did too, is because of its inherent liquidity. People needed to sell their silver and gold to some degree, uh, especially traders uh, needing to cover their margin calls. So it's kind of interesting to me that, um, you know, they, they perform their function. They're very liquid. They gave what the, uh, you know, people who had it, at least in the paper markets needed, and that is a, a way to quickly sell it. And that is actually what happened back in 2008 during, you know, the global financial crisis. So there's really no big shock there that it went down uh, initially during this, uh, situation that we had, but the, the premiums, yeah, yeah. the premiums though, was a surprise to a lot of people. Uh, in 2008, yeah. it didn't do it quite like it did now, <clears throat> but yeah. I think the reasons are, are, uh, also obvious. Um, we have had an amazing shutdown in the supply chain all the way from, from, from miners to refiners to, you know, the mint, to you know wholesalers right down through the supply chain it's been a, a real challenge and what happens is the demand goes through the roof especially for the physical and the supply gets constrained supply and demand that, that that's that's econ basic economics and what happened is there was this uh split between the paper markets what's traded the future contracts and and yeah. what spot is as, yeah. as in the price based on supply and demand. And so if you're holding, know, it's... so one last thing, if you're holding silver now, if you've been stacking it for years, good for you, but you should be encouraged because the price, actual price has actually held. That's what I was gonna say, that there's a lot of people out there who's, who just always focus on the spot price numbers. They always look at those raw numbers, but you mm -hmm. can never do that in my opinion. Mm -hmm. with silver gold maybe a little bit more so because often it's a lot of a smaller premium when you buy certainly for us in the uk it's a lot of a smaller premium and when you sell you get more value for it really because it, it is just so liquid compared with silver and people forget that yes the spot price went down but as you, you say the physical price for, for physical silver mm -hmm. went mm -hmm. up uh people are paying way more than they were three months ago when silver prices were you know, 14 pounds an ounce for us here in the UK, you know, 14 50 an ounce. All right. And people are paying, you know, ridiculous premiums now. And as you say, if you've hold, if you held it already, I think we're in agreement here. It's, it's really, really good. Mm -hmm. But this is what bore this idea of us doing a uh, little podcast together. I saw your video saying you, you were done with silver <laughs> to, to a, a massive degree. I agree with you because if you're looking at buying silver right now, you're putting yourself at a huge, in my opinion, mm -hmm. potential liability because you're buying at, for us in the UK, it would be 50% premiums for you in the US, maybe a little bit less, but on certain things like Eagles, right. prices that, you know, double spot price. And it, you know, you, you have then to think, are these premiums going to last? Mm. Are they going to be the same premiums in a year's time or in five years' time? Right, right, right. Probably I, not. Yeah, and that, if you're relying on that spot price again yeah. to go up. Let me just say that that, tr that video you mentioned, uh, um, all done with silver, really triggered a lot of people. I think I got the, mo the most thumbs down uh, <laughs> that I've ever gotten. <laughs> but it was because Yankee, people really join the club, my friend. <laughs> join the club. I would the, love the to join your club. You have what, 20... How many? 23,000 subscribers, man. I, I'm honored to have you on no, this show. 20, I'm about 20, 22, isn't me. Oh. When, you, when you do this, but the thing is, Yankee, this is the thing. You do, All right, teach me. You do School a video me. that's overtly <laughs> positive. You do a video that's overtly positive about silver, which 
we can do. We love silver. We talk we about do. silver all the time. And arguably, there are a lot of really good points about it. But right. I do think that it's right as a balanced, fair channel mm -hmm. to present all aspects of silver. And there are negatives. There are negatives. But there are people who can't see that or don't want no. to see that. No, I had they a video before things. the three reasons why silver sucks. That got a lot of yeah. uh, thumbs down, too. But then I followed it up with so, the three reasons silver doesn't suck. So, I mean, it really yeah, exactly. is a perspective, right? But, I'm trying to... The real, the real strange thing is that people always watch the negatives. They don't watch the positive. They don't reinforce what they think they know, but they watch what other people think is opposite to them because they want to prove them wrong or well, they don't yeah. believe that it's right. There's a psychological so, word there's for an that. Interesting, yeah, confirmation, yeah. confirmation bias. And my, my most watched video on my channel is nearly 300,000 views on why buying 1200 ounces of silver was a bad idea and this was filmed in 2018 yeah and uh that's had a real uptick of views in the last couple of weeks with everybody at home watching youtube and <laughs> it's interesting to look back at that and think well actually when you look back at that and this actually neatly brings us into one of our other points that we were talking about whether or not gold is better mm. is you look at the silver that i bought in 2018 and you look at the prices, even with the physical premiums that are available now, mm -hmm. it does just pales into insignificance compared with gold. And I'll quickly turn my camera on. I know we might have a few, but I'll show you just some of the prices paid. So if you, you, you feel free to mm -hmm. comment on what you, I mean, I know it's in pounds, but you can probably work out some of the equivalent dollar yeah, prices. Move it over a little bit to your left. Yeah, oh, there you sorry, go. Sorry, there we go. Oh, that's beautiful. We're, Mexican? We're looking at, yeah, oh. big old 50 peso. <laughs> and the price for this is, is just, you know, back in 2018, 1133, they're worth 1600 now. Oh, That's you a huge wanna... gain. I don't want you to turn off your video, but if you're going to talk, I think you need to. But oh. <laughs> <laughs> That is gorgeous. You go, you go and talk while we salivate over these. What oh. do you think? I mean, because gold's gone up. Silver wow. has yeah, not so, necessarily gone up in the same way. So again, I, I think we, we need to be instructed and learn from history. Um, I don't know if when you were stacking gold or silver, uh, my journey began in gold in 2009. My stacking journey with silver really took off in, in 2018. So there was this gap here. But if you look back at the uh, global financial crisis that we had in 2008, actually specifically at February... 2008 what happened well in the u.s <laughs> the uh president at the time uh launched the economic stimulus act of 2008 okay that included a tax rebate for us americans and money was being poured into the economy similar to what's going on now to try to avoid a recession what did silver do well spot price was just shy of 20 dollars an ounce in february and then by October, just eight months later, it had dropped to $10. 50% of its value gone in eight months. Then it, of course, after that, it, it began a three-year uh, bull run. But, you know, that that's amazing. Can you imagine that now? Can you imagine, what are we, uh, we've been riding 18, we're down to you know, 15, say, or something like that. Can you imagine it going to nine on yeah, silver? It, so, so perspective, right? Matter. That's what happened. You know, that to me is indicative of what we're seeing now. We're seeing a, a substantial drop in silver, although the premium still is, is there because there's this demand, this pent up demand. And I think, you know, when you when you think about it, uh, you know, silver and gold are both uh, traditionally safe havens, but gold is far more of a safe haven, especially among nations. Silver it, it, and this is not the bash silver. I stack a lot of it, but it is less of a safe haven. Okay, it is more of a speculative asset. It's more, um, you know, it, it's more industrial. Again, people really hate when Yankee says that because they say, "No, yeah. no, no, it's coinage." What are you talking about, Yankee? It's real money. No, it, yes, it, it, I get it. Every every phone, every computer, every microchip, everything has this precious metal in it. It's a superconductor. It is. You know, it is vital for the modern world that we live in. And people kind of, I think there's there's two elements of it. Some people who know that industry will know it. But then there's the stack, the hardcore stackers who just want it to become a currency again and almost sort of disbelieve that it could ever be used for something else. You know, it's coinage, surely. 
but the the world has changed quite immeasurably since you know silver was used those coins in mm. in general so yeah there's there's definitely i think there's a cult that's that's one of the cultural differences if we go back to our yeah. overarching kind of right theme here which is right. uk versus us culture mm-hmm. like for us in the uk we lost our silver coinage back in the in the, the late 40s i think i can't remember the exact day 48 or 47 mm-hmm. but you guys still had silver in your coins and still do in circulation you know you see all the coin hunters that find <laughs> real silver isn't it nice? you, go, you go to the bank you get free silver it's bad. I, i'd kill to have you know rolls and rolls of half dollars and hunt every day for them i'd do it every day because it's free silver it's mad so there's definitely that kind of cultural thing and and you do get more or in my I, in my opinion i'm sure you do get more people who are aware of what silver is in the us than in the uk which is interesting but in the uk gold has always been mm. a part of this bigger world and you you have this history i know we have like oh you know pre, you have pre-33 us gold but uh, we have sovereign and that's been a mainstay of uk coin collecting and to a certain extent stacking and wealth accumulation for hundreds of years right. and so that's i think really quite fascinating that the cultures there are different and we're always skewed more towards gold here in the uk and it's always more as a coin collector and rather than a stacker which i think is really fascinating can i give you an anecdote of that I, I, I've, i've been uh, i've been talking to my uh, local coin shop dealer and we can talk more about how we you know uh, procure our metals soon but you know uh, tim i've mm. talked about him a lot he's a fantastic guy i'm actually looking over here for a text because i'm going to be going in in just a few hours to pick up a couple more quarter ounce um uh, canadian maple leaf uh, pieces to add to my collection but i asked him i said you know what's the demand really like what what are you sensing because you're on the front line from a retail standpoint what are you getting and he said that in america the demand is starting to literally wane with silver and it's going up with gold he says i'm getting less and less calls over the last couple weeks about people saying hey you know tim do you have any silver you know what what can i get there's less than that uh, less than normal uh volume in that and more people calling and asking about gold i find that fascinating that, um, yeah that, that's quite amazing and i want to sort of echo i think those, those sentiments here in the uk because mm. even though we're seeing you know record highs of that ratio again go back mm-hmm. to the, the actual physical so, or i should say the premiums on physical right that ra- ratio is still actually around 80 to 1 where mm-hmm. we've seen it for this last year or so and yeah not you're not talking spot price people think, look at the spot price ratio right you're looking at exactly yes, yes. And, and people, exactly so spot price ratio is you know 115 10, to 1 or whatever yeah, it is right. but actual physical prices that if you if you've got a thousand dollars to spend mm-hmm. you're gonna pay and i've seen i've got i wouldn't know exactly what number but i've seen tens of thousands of pounds worth of business go on the silver forum in this last two weeks on gold alone probably fifty thousand plus worth of gold has been sold mm-hmm. on the silver forum and it goes within minutes you know there's i've seen people putting eight nine ten ounces of gold up and it sells within an hour and people want it but you see people putting up silver at a premium mm-hmm. and it stays around it might sell in time but it stays around And that's yeah. really interesting, I think. And I think let's because that brings us, I think, onto another point which I wanted to talk about. And you mm-hmm. mentioned it a little bit there with with your uh, local coin store uh, dealer, Tim, mm-hmm. that the dealers are under a lot of pressure at the moment, and that that's fueling quite a lucrative second-hand market for people who need to sell privately and bypass those dealers. Right, right, right. How how do you guys see that in the US? Is it still easy to sell to dealers right now? Because for us in the UK, pretty much every dealer has closed their doors to buying. <laughs> you mean Just is it easy from a? Stuff to them. Is it yeah? So you're saying is it easy from a, a physical standpoint, a logistics standpoint? Yeah. Well, yeah. well, Tim's closed, technically. Yeah. <laughs> He definitely uh, will open the doors uh, for for people. Uh, do deals. I know I sometimes feel like it's a freaking speakeasy <laughs> that I'm actually going through. You know, it's like, we'll make the deal in the parking lot. Okay, nobody say anything. But <laughs> with, his, with his trench coat over right, him, right, right. <laughs> It is kind of fun. But um, you yeah. You want to buy some silver? <laughs> no, I want the good stuff, man. You got any gold? 
So um, yeah, it's it's a challenge. But uh, my last uh, video, we both slapped on our masks and kind of stared at each other and giggling like uh, this is this is funny. But yeah, it is challenging. Uh, you said, is it challenging to sell? I know for one thing, Tim and, and other local coin shop dealers here in the states will buy your precious metals on a heartbeat. I mean, they just want it badly. Uh, they'd love to be able to have somebody, you know, tap on their door and say, I've got a, you know, monster box of American silver eagles here I'd like to sell. I think one of the people in our community, Silver Chimp, over here was selling piles of silver, uh, or is actually, uh, the last few days. I mean, and everybody's just gobbling it up. But uh, even the dealer, even Tim was like, well, I'll, I'll buy it, you know. So there's a desire for our, you know, dealers or, or, or retailers to, to grab as much as they can. But it is really hard for them to get it from their wholesalers. They're hunkered down. There's a lot yeah. of uh, challenges logistically to do it. Um, so yeah, there, there definitely. If you want to sell, there's a buyer. Absolutely. Well, I, it, it, there's there's the other interesting thing here that comes uh, the, in the UK certainly, and I think hmm. probably the answer is similar in the US. That a lot of people are feeling like the dealers are almost overtly and deliberately hmm. profiteering and mm -hmm. taking advantage of people who are, I mean, there are going to be a lot of people in this world who are going to have lost their jobs or be up against it because they're furloughed at home on reduced pay or sure. not able to earn money. And, uh, yeah. you know, they maybe have to sell their metals and the dealers are profiteering blatantly on this. Price guy. Uh, how do you, yeah how, how how have you kind of is there similar things happening or feelings out, out there that you're seeing from your either from your viewers commenting oh, yeah. or videos that you've made and and how do you feel about oh, that situation there's vitriol there's anger there, there's a lot of people especially i have to say those who are you know been watching on the sidelines maybe not stacking as hard in the last uh, months and years this this has really hit hard but again it's a perspective um, you know, you see the spot price drop, you assume that that means the price at the retail store is also going to drop, whether it's at a pawn shop or LCS or online with the big bullion dealers. And I was just on, you know, Jam Bullion, who I love, and I saw their American Eagle, their 2020s that they have in stock for 25 bucks each. And you look at that and you're like, gosh, holy smokes, that's like... That's ten dollars over spot almost. I mean, that's like what thirty-three uh, percent markup or something. I don't know. It, it's a lot of money to to pay if you again look at spot price. But if you look at it from what's the demand and what's the real price. I mean, we, I in the United States, a lot of us love free market capitalism. We we we. That's what our country was based on economically. You know, I, I go on our Yankee rant here and talk about where I think it's gone. But we love that, except for when we want to buy something, right? And the demand is high and the supply is low. So I, I don't want to be harsh. I'm not saying that there isn't some price gouging somewhere. But I, I really think most yeah. of it is just supply and demand. So I think there's there's two categories, isn't there? There's the, uh, as you say, the dealers have such issues getting their stock from suppliers. Mines are closing down, mm -hmm. refineries are closing down, mints mm -hmm. are closing down, the supply chain's interrupted with sickness and uh, health and safety, people not being able to work. And in those situations, I have absolutely no problem with a dealer going, well, do you know what? My, my overheads have gone up, the unit price has gone up, so right. we have to charge this much for these pieces, for new pieces. But you do get a bit of a sour taste in your mouth sometimes when a dealer buys a monster box from somebody and then immediately flips it for, you mm -hmm. know, $10 an ounce profit. And you feel that yeah. that feels like I feel wrong. But people have got to remember at the end of the day that, you know, dealers are a business. And so I've got two heads on. I've got this. That seems horrible. But I run a business. I run a small business and, and money where you can, because you don't know from month to month how businesses are going to, you know, right. in interact with each other and be able to trade. So there's two parts of it. I feel like, yeah, that's that's harsh. But I also feel, mm. well, actually, like you say, free market capitalism, but people moan about it when it affects them. And, right. and that's something that people need to remember that people, you know, these dealers are businesses too. They'll have employees, they'll have supply chains, which are going to be affected if they shut down, if they can't make money. And that's a big thing. You know, the world can collapse right. because of this hysteria. 
and that's you know I haven't I guess I, I, you know, I, I, I haven't seen about. I haven't seen what the online bullion dealers are doing with the buying and selling again with Yankee my strategy I, I never sell this stuff I just don't I'm not in it to flip so well maybe, I'm, maybe I'm, a little I'm, bit, I'm maybe a little bit. Right <laughs> so I, I have you have you your know, stack like, right so you, you you understand how you hold on to it but what my point was um, I, I don't know what's going on with the online bullion dealers I don't know what kind of uh, inventories they're holding on to because they bought in at such a high price but I do know from a local coin shop dealer mine uh, Tim I actually understand what he's buying, what he's paying for. So if I walked in, like you said, yeah. with my monster box, I know what I will get. And it won't be what you were just talking about. It's not going to be, oh, I'm going to buy it at spot. I'm going to flip it immediately for a $10 increase. It That actually is not the case. So, you know, he will get a little bit of a profit, but he's not what you call profiteering. So I, I don't know. It oh, probably so ranges across coin dealers and retailers, but I haven't seen well, it. Well, it's, it's, it, it's a similar thing. From my end, because I'm, uh, as you you may have seen from some of our channels, we do a lot of work with the European Mint in Estonia, mm. where we do these huge, ridiculous boxings, and that's my main supplier for the poured silver side of my business. And when prices were going down, you know, you'd be stupid not to try and take advantage of lower prices for your raw materials as a business. So when I was trying to, you're, you you end up being, you know, told, well, ultimately we can't get this for anything less than these prices, and I. Mm. And I know that that's true because this guy I've been working with for three years, he's not, he is a very clever chap. He knows that he could make lots of money profiteering, but what's the point in doing that if it's going to ruin your reputation? So he's right. very above board. He showed, you know, he showed me emails from the Indian Royal Mint where he gets a lot of the supply. You know, a lot of my poured silver is actually Canadian silver because it's made from silver from the Royal Canadian Mint. <laughs> me shows me these uh you know these emails from the royal canadian mint that they're struggling to get hold of raw material from refineries mm. from from mines from suppliers and yeah. the costs are just phenomenal and and it's it's scary uh right. for, for these businesses i do like transparency um, i do like transparency like that and when tim shows me his wholesale costs that he's getting it it does in genuine or in genuine uh confidence or trust you know what i'm saying you look yeah, at that and go yeah. oh that's what you're paying that's what it is up the supply chain okay yeah. i get it yeah i, I don't think I people have it's... that i i think too often they don't see that i it, agree completely you know? and it's a really it that in that as you say it just adds to that business relationship and hmm. uh, i think the transparency there as you say he could potentially have profited and hmm. just said no actually it's going to be an extra two pounds an ounce if you want to buy it hmm. on what he's paying and he makes loads of money but again like what's the point because you get one small deal and that's it you yep. lose your clients you lose your business and you it's just not, not worth it, it. Yeah. i have a question for you about procurement so we're talking about local coin shops do you have I know you can get things online to some degree, but do you have other, you, and, and of course the forum, which is fantastic for you guys, but do you have other ways to just like meet up with people and, and it, you know, purchase things like we do? This is one thing that I absolutely would love to be similar to America, coin shop in every town, almost, <laughs> but it's just not, it's just not. The, the only things that you could have where you could go into town, and they're all closed right now, which is the other crazy mm. thing, uh, would be the equivalent of pawn shops. So you go in and they'll buy your gold, your silver. They'll have signs on the door saying, we buy coins, we sell coins. But they, they'll give you 80% of spot price mm. and they'll sell you at 50% over spot price, even for gold. And they just wow. take advantage of walk-in customers. Oh in the UK, it's all about online stuff, unfortunately. And, and the dealers, uh, I mean, if you're close by to a dealer and you mm. live in the same town as one, uh, that's... You know, there's quite a few in Birmingham that's very historically, the jewellery quarter in Birmingham is very historically, um, you know, that's where all of the gold and silver makers were, were at, at uh, you know, 100 years ago. And that's continued through. So if you're there, you're fine. You can just walk into town and find one, but have that. Same in London, you can pop into um, to Hatton Garden, which is obviously the sort of jewellery quarter of London. Right. Um, but outside of pretty much Birmingham and London and one or two other major cities, you're not going to get the, that easy thing so it's all done wow. over postal services and, uh, right. and online and there's a lot of trust issues there and obviously the shipping costs are added on top of that for when you're buying and mm -hmm. selling too and um, as you said as well the forum I guess that's probably mm. like uh, you know I, I've been a long-term 
sponsor well they've been a long-term sponsor of my channel so i'll give them a little plug for anybody watching in what's the 30 odd minutes of this podcast and um, you know that that is simply the best place in the uk to buy and sell gold right now wow. and silver it, it really it is that people will happily as i said trade fifty thousand pounds worth i've seen probably or more go in this last two weeks and um and that is incredible so that's the shame i think for us in the uk mm -hmm. in the uk we just don't have that sort of history of coin shops there are a few really small ones how about just the free market of, of of exchange i mean we use i use facebook marketplace let go offer up these apps on my phone to in person and of course in a public place but in person yeah. meet up make an exchange of course it's usually for you know, uh, constitutional silver, as we call it. But, you know, it, it can be all kinds of silver and gold. So do you have that type of, um, you, know, you know, interaction in the community? Yeah, the, there are. We, we have the equivalent of, uh, of Craigslist. I think you guys have over there and, and various, you know, Facebook marketplaces and things like that. Of course, yeah. there's eBay. Mm. But again, it's like, I think there's this culture in the UK of, uh, of mistrust. And certainly when it comes to... Uh, I think UK stackers are very mistrustful of face-to-face -face meetings. You do see some people on the forum, for example, put up, um, you know, two thousand pounds worth of silver or gold, and say, "Would you know, would be happy to meet to exchange." And they just they get stonewalled. They get stoned. So you can hear the tumbleweed almost in the background. Oh of their my boats, goodness! You know? um, it is it is funny. Uh, wow. I've personally met a number of people and bought and sold uh, silver and done. Uh, there was a video I, I put up a couple of years ago. Now I bought five. 100 ounce bars from a chap in a car park of a pub yep. and i walked home three miles it was like a, in fact that that video has had a few more tick up reviews and i had a really great comment from somebody saying it was like a uh in video game quest you meet in the uh you know in the tanned feather or something at, uh, at dusk and then yep. walk home and don't try and meet you know not meet anyone in the so, down, don't yeah you know, it can be <laughs> It can be done, um, yes. but uh, yeah, the, the culture here in the UK is very much like you want to be private. You want, you know, you want to keep people to see your face. Like, you know, both of us have faceless YouTube channels, but ultimately, like, it, it is, you know, the privacy thing I suppose is quite important for people these days. Certainly in this modern sure. world, um, and I and I value privacy too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't you've think, always got to draw a line. I don't think I've ever. I, I don't. I don't think I've ever been more. Um, uh, aware of my surroundings and of course uh i think i had i think i was packing uh actually at the time i, I do carry occasionally uh you just have to pick when what days i am so i just want to talk on that point so that's a huge cultural difference between uk and us so the gun culture and, and yeah. yeah like i guess that's a, a factor because if you're going to go meet somebody they're probably going to think well if you've got you know in a certain state if you've got ten thousand dollars worth you're doing an exchange for there's going to be some consequences if you try and screw with someone. So here in the UK, gun ownership is not quite so easy. And if you do have a shotgun license, which is uh -huh. fairly easy to get hold of, okay. unless you're going out to actually use your shotgun for a legitimate reason, if you get pulled <laughs> over and it's in your car, you go to prison. You know, oh if, you, if, you're, if you say, I'm bringing my shotgun because I'm meeting somebody to sell some gold, go to prison. That's, there's just no two ways about it. Yeah, just to finish the thought I was saying, it was when I was going to buy the Yankee Cannon. So I was getting a full 21 ounce gold pieces and I did go through a reputable dealer for that and tested it and all that kind of stuff. But I was rather nervous, like you were saying, coming out, you know, looking around like I had to get in my car and get home. You know, it's just kind of funny that the mentality that you can have uh, when you're exchanging things. But usually when you're doing silver, at least in the States, um, we're, we're less concerned, I think, about that type of exchange, or I am at least, uh, and in public place, obviously. We actually have places right now at the police station uh, where I live in, in most towns around, where it's an exchange location, where you can actually go outside yeah. the police and just make your exchanges and feel more safe about it. I, I will say that there's a couple other differences between uk and us stacking that i'd love to be able to talk about with you maybe we can do this again another video well have you got have you got them on the tip of your tongue should we give a teaser to someone watching to th minute 35 or whatever we're at now what, yeah. what did you have in mind i wonder sometimes if the people in the uk 
uh, really understand, you know, the, the, the focus that we have with silver. Because silver is, again, something that we really yeah. stack heavily over here as well. If you're, yeah. you know, silver, you don't have to be a silver bug either. But, you know, silver is critical, and I don't want to shortchange it. But it has an amazing history. And I'm just wondering if, you know, you would, yeah, that would, would be, be appreciate cool that. We haven't really focused on focus today on where things might go. Right. So perhaps we, we can so we can look back maybe a little bit and learn a little bit about you mentioned you know when the silver was uh, you know taken out of your coin uh, your coinage was debased a little bit of a, the American yeah. history and why we get so passionate about this stuff uh, especially silver being a part of our coinage and what yeah. it means even constitutionally and we can talk about the future love, where love, we think it's all going and I love the the idea in your culture as well about Fort Knox and how there are all of these conspiracy <laughs> theories that it's all gone or it's all fake <laughs> or it's all painted lead bars and all of this and yeah. or gold plated bars and things. And I, I like that idea. Whereas us in the UK, one of our prime ministers back in 2003 sold all of our gold for 300 pounds an ounce, you know, four, $450 an ounce, just gone the whole, whole reserve. Uh, wow. You know, and there's that cultural difference which sure. I think is kind of cool. So well, that would be fun. <laughs> that would be kind of cool. yeah, but, uh, who knows? The world could be a very different place in a month's time when we get around to maybe sitting down and filming something like that. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll endeavour to do that. Thank you. Really enjoyed it today. And you know, for for everybody who has been watching this long, because it's been a while uh, on this podcast. Uh, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let us know what you think down in that uh, comment section. Let us know what you think by hitting that thumbs up button as well. It really does help both of our channels and for those of you who are watching it on my channel as opposed to on <laughs> yankee's channel go over to his channel and subscribe oh. because he's a quality chap and love having his videos on in the background when i'm doing work in the house or silver pouring it's uh, a really interesting oh. so uh no, yeah go and, go and sub to him he's a quality chap what are you on now about nine thousand subs or something yeah, I'm almost to 9,000. I am shocked by that. Again, just to have this conversation mm -hmm. with you is quite an honor because, you know, you're you're someone I've yeah. always watched and always respected. I love your pours, your rambles, your incredible uh, videos are amazing. I, I enjoy it very much, and I appreciate the kind words. Thank you. Go and sub if you haven't for some strange reason. Backyard Bullion. You're, you're going to really enjoy his channel if you haven't checked him out yet. But uh, thanks so much again, Backyard Bullion, for this uh this conversation across the pond. <laughs> and I hope we can do this again real soon. So I hope time. your day is A-OK, -okay, everyone. <laughs>